Hello, I'm Magnus. Today I've just released a new version of Elm Light, the Elm language plugin for Lighttable. In this version 0.4, the big news is that I'm using an ASD, an abstract syntax tree under the hood to drive many of the features. I guess for you that's probably an unimportant implementation detail, but for me it will enable more cool and useful features to be implemented faster going forward. Anyways. Let's check out some of the new things that have been added in this version. So we'll start off with the autocompleter. The autocompleter has become a little bit more context aware. So if I'm in the expose and close of my module and type something, it will only suggest uh, candidates that are actually applicable in this context. So I haven't exposed the functions foo and bar. So let's go ahead and do that. And you will see that once I've actually exposed foo, it won't be suggested because it's aware of the fact that I've already uh, exposed that. So that's kind of handy. Okay, so in an import, uh, it will only suggest modules that are uh, obviously available to you based on your project dependencies, but it will uh, also, it's aware of which modules you've already imported. Anyways, we'll be importing dict. So I'll give it an alias of dict. And we'll be using get and from list. So let's create a top level value of some sort, initial. And we can use dict like this. And you'll see that it's providing a lot of all the suggestions available for the dict module. And on the right hand side, you'll see that it's displaying the uh, originating module for the function or uh, value. Right, uh, but of course, we provided an explicit expose for that, so we can just write get, and you'll see get well is also suggested here, but it's not showing any originating module. That means that it's a function that's defined in this module. Right, and you'll also notice that there is no uh, type signature, which would have been handy, but they can get kind of long, so I didn't want the auto completer to sort of be too massive, so I opted not to show that for now. Um, so, what you can do instead is just use the documentation feature. So, toggle, sorry, toggle documentation at cursor, and that sh will show you the documentation for the function. So, you can just leave that open. So get a and create a dictionary from a list like this. A comma some value, the A. And now we can close the documentation. And if I save now, it configured to do auto linting. So Let's see what that means. Well, it's missing a type annotation, so I can just add that. Right, so that's cool. Uh, let's say I want to expose this function uh, externally. Well, I can use the expose top level definition command, and you will see that it's added to top here in my exposing list. And you'll also notice that there's a tiny symbol here indicating that this value is exposed externally. And if I want to unexpose it, I can do that, of course. Cool. Um, that leads us to the next feature, which is an auto import feature. So, um, let's say I want to create a decoder. And now I'll be using decode string from the JSON encode module in the mline core. But of course this wouldn't work because I haven't actually imported that yet. So auto import module is a command that will automatically uh, resolve that and import the JSON decode module and give it a prefix and give it an alias based on the prefix I've used. Of course this doesn't work to wouldn't work if you did 
did something a little bit more ambiguous, like hex.map, if I try the auto import module command now, it will provide a list of candidates. So maybe I want to use the random one. I don't know. Okay, cool. Um, documentation. So I've shown you a glimpse of that already, but you can show documentation for your own functions. So toggle documentation at Tursor. So you can see the documentation for my own function like this. And I can see the documentation for a, well, there isn't really any documentation for union types, but it does display the uh, signature of the constructor function for that union type, which is kind of useful. And of course for functions and for types. So that's kind of useful. Um, of course, when you're programming, you want to be able to navigate quickly uh, between functions in your code. So you can use the jump to feature. So jump to definition at cursor. So that moves the cursor to that particular function. And then I can move on to another module using the jump to command. And I can, of course, jump back to where I came from. And this works for uh, types as well. And it even works for uh, union types. Uh, and what's even more, you can actually jump to the definition of an external module or external function in any packages you might have imported as well. So that might be useful if you want to check out the implementation of some third party package function. Right, and finally, um, you can, uh, you might want to look at where a particular function has been used. So let's check out the add function from module C. Where is that used in my project? Well, you have the find users command, which will give you a list of all of the hits where add, the add symbol is used, uh, grouped by a module. So you'll see that it's uh, actually also getting hits for comments and will get hits for uh, within strings and, and other stuff as well. So it's not totally narrowed down, but it's, it's still kind of useful. So you can quickly move between functions like this. And there's even a quick link here to move to the uh, originating uh, candidate token. Right, I think that's pretty much it. Um, if you want to read more about it, do check out the, uh, the GitHub repository, which is at Runlis uh, Elm Life. And here you'll find a link to the documentation for a plugin as well, which will help you get started. So there's a git book here that describes pretty much all of the functionality for the plugin. So hopefully you'll uh, find the Elm Light plugin uh, useful for uh, working with your Elm projects. And um, if you find any issues, do report them at uh, the issue tracker on, on GitHub. And yeah, that's it. Thanks for now.